All right, another question about Wichita State. Here we go. Um, over the years, I know you guys have you know talked back and forth a little bit about playing. Um, the timing was never right. Why is it right now? Why is it a good time to play Wichita State finally? I, you know, at, at obviously it was a little banter back and forth uh, through the years. And there was a, you know, times, you know, you know, they wanted to play a couple of times we offered to play and, and, you know, it didn't work out. You know, my main thing when I called them uh, last year was, you know, we were in, you know, the lockdown and hoping there would be, you know, it wasn't going to happen, you know, go the lockdown go like it did through the year last year. But uh, I just said, let's do a charity game, uh, you know, open up the, the doors, uh, you know, to maybe playing in the future and, and also hopefully raise some money. And then, you know, once that kind of got going, um, you know, then we got the administrations involved and, and just, uh, you know, thought it was good. I, I said the other night, it's good for college basketball. It's good for our state. Um, you know, it's, a, it's, you know, it, obviously when you, if you lose, it's not a good situation, but you got to play tough games and, you know, that's how you get better as, as a, as a team and a program. And uh, this is, uh, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a good game for us right now. We'll see where we are. They're, they're tough. They're physical. They know how to play. They, they win games. Uh, it's not always the prettiest, but they, he gets them to find ways to win. It's kind of amazing. So we'll, you know, it'll, it'll be interesting. It should be fun. I hope it's a great crowd and uh, I hope it becomes a, you know, something that stays for a while and, and people, the fans enjoy it. So if things go good here, you could see it being a regular home and home kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, we got a four game contract right now. We, when we did that, we thought it was, you know, good to have allow fans from both programs um, to see games. That's why we did in trust, uh, you know, that they, they have their good season ticket base there. You know, now this allows some of our people to come to the game. Uh, when it's in when it's in Wichita, uh, we got the Kansas City game. Then we have the home and home Bramlage in the Coke Arena. So, um, you know, it, it gives a little bit of option for everything, and and you know, for their fans, our fans, and hopefully add some excitement to college basketball in in the you know in December. Uh, you know, I, there was there's been some pretty good games on early. Um, you know, in, in November and December, some of it, you get that through the exempt events, but they also, there's been some really, you know, positive games or exciting games that hopefully bring some attention to college basketball a little earlier than after the holidays. Thanks, Bruce. Yep. Got a couple other questions, Tom, there. You're muted. Oh, sorry. My fault. <laughs> Cole, you got the next question. Yeah. Hey, Coach, I was just wondering, um, Tyson Etienne, he's been a big part of Wichita State offensively. What's going to be the game plan I'm trying to stop him? Well, the other night, uh, Isaac Legolay uh, with Oklahoma State, in a way, almost face guarded him uh, a lot of the game. And they they limited his shot, his production, his shot, his shot attempts. Um, it was probably his low for the year, I would think. Uh, and, you know, I'm not sure we're going to go to that extent, but, uh, you know, we have to be aware of him and conscious of him. I, I, I hope we have enough bodies that we can keep going, enough defenders. Uh, you know, I've said that since the beginning, uh, you know, from from Selton to. Uh, Mark and Mike, uh, you know, you got some pretty, you, you hope you have some pretty good matchups on him. And even when we get in switching situations, uh, you know, we still should be okay with it, you know, with that. But, uh, you know, it's easier said than done because he can, he can make plays and they give him freedom to make those plays. And he, he's going to make some tough shots. You just, we just got to limit his easy open ones and not let him get in a rhythm. And then Wichita State's only scored 70 points uh, in two of their seven games, but they're six and one. So what does that say about them uh, defensively? 
Well, if you look at the analytics, uh, you know, they're one of the better defensive teams there, you know, in their ratings and the defensive end, especially, I think that they're one of the best in the country, three point defense, uh, you know, a lot of other stats they're they're up there also, uh, probably the only one where they have a good rating on offense is offensive rebounds. And, uh, but again, it's what I said at the beginning, they find ways to win. They, they grind it out. They win close games. Uh, probably shouldn't have won the Vegas game, you know, and, it, and it's just, but they keep playing. The other thing they, they show, you know, really good perseverance. They come back. They, Arizona's the one that was beating them pretty soundly. And even that game, they got it to overtime. So um, Oklahoma state, if you watch that, uh, the second half, I, we stayed after our game the other night and rewatched it at, at most of the staff. And, I kept saying to them, are you sure the score is right? Because Oklahoma State was up eight or nine and, you know, it, it, it looked like they had some control of the game. And then the next thing you know, Okie State just, uh, you know, doesn't score down the stretch. And, and that's what they've been really good at. And I tell our guys all the time, you, you know, you, you got to score some points to win games. But you can, if you get stops, it gives yourself a chance. And teams get tight at the end. Uh, I think it – you know, you would anticipate it's going to be a close game. Then who can make the right plays at the end of the game? Then last one for me. I know you talk about how every game is important, but is there a little bit added significance in this game just based off of what happened in Kansas City, kind of one of those resume building games? Yeah, there's no – I mean, it's it's a helpful game. you got – I mean, uh, you know, we, we've we done better if you look, you know, with your net rating – uh, right now, those aren't even out yet, but you can look at some of the other sites. You know, if we beat teams, the teams you're supposed to beat, you beat them soundly and you have good uh, offense and defensive uh, analytics, it, it helps you. But you also need to beat teams. And, you know, we had a couple opportunities, high level teams. Uh, now you got another couple this week. So it's uh, I told them two weeks ago when we left Kansas City, we're going to have I, I told them this is a little mini tournament again. You got Sunday, Wednesday, and, uh, you know, so we'll we'll see how much growth and progress we've made. Thanks, Coach. Yep. Uh, next question for Grant Flanders. Hey, Coach. I'm just wondering uh, what we can expect from our cat, if you've seen any of their games and if you prepared for that game on Wednesday. I don't want you to look too far ahead, but it seems <laughs> like they've had a good season, and I want yeah. you to talk about uh, – what we could expect possibly on Wednesday. Well, you know, Shaka, I, I've watched a little bit because they played Illinois and then uh, West Virginia in the tournament. You just kind of, I, I probably haven't watched any whole games. And uh, Coach Southwell has that scout. And I, you know, I always try to sit in the office with the guys during the day if they're watching some, just to get a feel and get your, your mind thinking about things. But, I, you know, Shaka has brought good energy to them. Uh, and it seems like they're excited to play for him. Uh, it's a little bit more like his VCU teams uh, where they're pressing, they're playing hard. They, they, they get you in ball screens. They get the ball moving. Uh, they've shot the three quite a bit. And uh, so we'll, you know, it, it'll, it'll be a good game. Uh, there's no doubt. They, you know, they're one, uh, they battled the heck out of a lot of people. Won some, they've got some good wins. Obviously, St. Bonaventure uh, was a tough game, and they're a really good team. So, uh, you know, I don't know what they – they probably have somebody this weekend. I haven't looked at it. But uh, they're going to come in with a good record and feeling good about themselves. And, you know, it's uh, – you know, I know our fans always say, get, you know, good games in here, and that's why we're, we have that Big East Challenge – to hope, you know, to allow some games in the, in December where you get some good home games. Uh, and, you know, I wish the SEC was in December also to challenge. And I've said that all along because, you know, you get after, get after the holidays, you got your league to worry about, and then you still throw in a, another SEC game. That adds a, it adds in a tough uh, dynamic for your, your teams. But – uh, they, people think it's good for our league and, and good for TV, I think, more than anything. So we've continued to have that. But, you know, these good games in December uh, are helpful and growing as a team, preparing, but hopefully good for the fans also. 
I know you've talked about it in the past, but I want to ask you again, like who, who do you think is the Barry Brown at this point in the season on this team, if there is one, or is it kind of just a collection of, you know, good basketball players? You know, Barry Brown's uh, a rare individual. <laughs> Collins and, you know, that's why you walk through Bramlage, their pictures are up on the walls, uh, uh, you know, several times. And, uh, and he did it over, you know, a course of time, he, you know, freshman year, he was just okay. You know, you guys don't remember that. You remember junior and senior year. So, uh, you know, I don't know if we, uh, you know, probably the best thing about Barry was his, his leadership, his, uh, resilience uh you know that he just he he wouldn't give in and um you know i think that'll be a key for us and it's it's one of the reasons we went through the program with the the military guys to see if we could build that toughness that that one one team one heartbeat uh you know focused on missions focused on team uh all those things because that you know i still go back and i a very story where Cam goes down and we come back and he said, we got to practice tomorrow. And I said, we can't because we got to give you the day off. And he said, well, we're practicing. I'm going to bring, I'm got everyone in the gym and he had his own practice. And I mean, that's just, you know, that it, it turned our season probably turned the next two seasons because of what he did. And uh, you know, if we somehow we could get somebody to that's holding people accountable. And that's what we've talked yeah. a lot about here in the fall. And I, I don't think we're at that point yet, but it would, um, you know, it, we show some guys doing that, but I don't think anyone's been consistent other than Nigel enough to do it all the time. Is there anyone in practice that not necessarily that they're doing the wrong thing, but that you harp on more than anyone else to make, to make sure that, Hey, you're, you got to be a leader of this team. Well, one of the, you know, we're trying to get Nigel be more vocal and I, you know, it, it, Nigel's just a good young man, so humble. And I don't think it's probably in there. You know, Mike, we've talked about for years, he, he does it by, uh, you know, by his example, uh, you know, being, you know, every day doing what he's supposed to, but it, sometimes it takes a verbal poet person and uh, you know, the one that, you know, Selton's probably shown it as much as anybody. I'm trying to starting to slowly work on Marquise, but he's, you know, he, because he's got that, uh, yeah. I think he has the intelligence, he has that desire, uh, but he, I think he's still trying to figure out what we want out of him and, uh, you know, understanding his role and, and where he fits in. And, uh, you know, you got to, I told him the other day, you got to hold yourself accountable before you can hold the other guys accountable. And, and that, that could be a, you know, a big step, you know, with, with him and Selton and, you know, those guys, if, if to develop that type of leadership. Thank you, coach. Yep. Uh, I, some of you guys should have seen this in the notes, but uh, Ish did play a ball with uh, Tyson ETN. So uh, for those that are interested in that, um, uh, we'll go to uh, Ben Steele uh, from the Milwaukee paper. Oh, go ahead, Ben. Hey, Bruce, I got a couple of uh, off the beaten path questions for you. Sure. I know you've, I know you've talked uh, in the past about attending Marquette practices, you know, with Al had those open practices Friday and Saturday nights. Yep. Uh, just, just what did you learn from coaching? I think you were coaching at You were at UWM at the time, right? And you were coaching a little bit. Uh, what, I, what did you learn I, as a coach? Well, I, I probably went more to those practices when I was younger. Um, you know, when, you know, when coach McGuire was still there and they, he did that, you know, people will say, why would you practice at eight o'clock on Friday and Saturday? Well, he didn't want those guys going out and getting in trouble on right. uh, down on the, at the gym and those places. So, um, you know, it, and it was, it was probably smart, but uh, you know, to me, it was just, the intensity of those practices and and you know it was it was a different era you know Al would drive into practice on a motorcycle or <laughs> you know come with his entourage or get in a fight with one of the players I mean there were you know you you saw you never knew what you could expect obviously <laughs> that I'm not sure you can do those things in this day and age but uh you know I you know I had the good fortune of being around not only Coach McGuire but Rick Majerus more even Hank Raymond, some, um, you know, just you think about 
names in the history of basketball. You know, all those three are, are, are you know, really, really important. And, and growing up and watching the Bucks also in Milwaukee from, Fred, you know, expansion, I, I used to go to 25, 30 games because yeah. uh, you could go for a buck. <laughs> buck night, 10 nights yeah. a year, buck night, top row. So, um, you know, it, it, it was, it was our life, our family, my brothers had coaches and yeah. you know, Ron's in the Wisconsin high school of fame, Davidson, Illinois high school hall of fame. My dad, yeah. you know, kind of had his own legacy, uh, you know, on the playgrounds and the rec centers and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, all the things he did. And uh, so just a lot of great memories that kind of, I guess, inspired me to go into college coaching, um, you know, more than anything. Yeah. Did you, you know, I think you went to those practices with your brothers and and yeah. Tom Desatel too, right? And you guys Desitel, all yes, yes, you guys Got all became coach. good coaches. But were you, were you find yourself watching the coaches more during those? And but I mean they had, they had some awesome players back then, you know Lloyd yeah. Walton and Butch Lee and all those cats were playing back then. George Thompson, and yeah, Meminger and uh, Jim Jones and. Uh, you know, Bernard Toon, and I mean, it, the names go on and on. Uh, but I would, yeah, I, like I said, it, it probably inspired me to get into the coaching profession. Obviously, Coach Desitel, um, you know, got, you know, gave us all a kind of our start. My dad, with my dad, started the Wiz Kids organization. I guess AAU, before there was AAU at a young age. And, um, you know, and then Tom obviously has his own legacy, Coach Desitel, and uh, you know, and then I got the good fortune, uh, Tom Sager and, and Ray Rozak, and then worked for Coach Nowak at Mar Marquette University High School um, and worked all the camps with them and Rick, Coach mm -hmm. Majerus. So, you you know, you, you know, and, and you were around a lot of good people and then working all the, you know, metals industry camps, the, the Bucks camps. I mean, all the different things through the years. Uh, you know, it just kind of got me into the coaching profession, all of us, and and the love of the game. Yeah, you got any good Rick Majera stories that are suitable for a, a I Zoom cannot, call like I this? Cannot repeat them on. <laughs> if you get me on, if you're here Wednesday and you get after the game, I can tell you something. So. All right. Yeah, I'll count on that. Uh, just one quick thing. I know, uh, not related to Marquette, but. Coach Desitel used to take you guys around to the playgrounds around around Milwaukee, and that was a big thing back then. Just what are your memories of those kind of experiences? Unbelievable. I, I'll be honest. Uh, Coach uh, Majerus had Hart Park. Obviously, Coach Desitel had the Endress Park. Uh, my brother had uh, Columbus and Lindsay, and then I ended up running the Lindsay Park uh, League at one time. Uh, you know, those were – it was it, – for us, it was the NBA. It was the finals. Uh, you yeah. know, we played – my group of buddies, uh, you know, one of the most memorable games we played, I think three or four of the Marquette guys that won the national championship on a playground game the next summer, you know, so it was uh, crazy, you know, and that thing went down to the end, uh, you know, so those are, you know, just fun memories for us. And, you you know, I tell our guys, they have, you know, one guy wouldn't dive on the floor last week. I said, I used to dive on the asphalt. I mean, all <laughs> the time. I mean, that because you, if you didn't win, you had to go home because you there were four, you know, four or six teams waiting to play after you. So uh, just, you know, really found memories of, of, of childhood and growing up and, and playing on the Milwaukee on those all those playgrounds. We every night was a different night, which one you went to. And then obviously my dad kind of ran the, uh, some of the, the rec, the Milwaukee public school rec leagues and um, going to Garden Homes and Hampton and, and yeah. some of the different places through all the years, just, uh, you know, great memories, great experiences, uh, helped me grow up as a, as a person. Who are, who are some of the names of the players that you remember playing against back then? Um, uh, oh, I don't know that, you know, it, there's just a, a lot of guys. I, yeah. my buddy, I, <laughs> I guess I'm getting old. If I had my high school guys here, Who's, they would they would have all the names they'd read them off to you but we we yeah. played the better guys including Marquette Rosenberg you know yeah. grew up not far away and uh you know Jeff Jonas and and all those guys that uh, came up through there mm -hmm. yeah appreciate you coach thanks man thank you uh next question for Ryan Black Bruce hey how are you this morning 
Good. Hey, I just want to ask, because you kind of been asked a couple of different questions specifically about the Wichita State game Sunday. And um, I know, obviously, you get you get excited for the non-con games, like the ones in Kansas City and obviously the annual, you know, Big East and, and SEC ones. But but how much for you personally does this add extra excitement just given the in-state nature of, of Sunday's game? Well, it, you know, it, and they always say, and we went through, it's interesting, the program, um, you know, when we had that group, the military guys here, they, they talked to the guys and said, you don't rise up for big games. You, you go back to your training, your habits. And, and if you don't have good habits and discipline and training, when you get to those big games, you're not going to be ready. Um, and it really hit me, you know, and, and there's no doubt there's extra excitement for, you know, whether we play Kansas or we play, you know, elite teams, uh, you know, coming in Oklahoma years ago, number one coming in or whoever it might be. Um, you know, I know for the players that adds some excitement, but it still goes back, you know, to your, your training. And, and are we going to have the discipline, the toughness? to be able to grind out a game. And, and that's what we got to relate to our guys that, uh, you know, especially on, on Sunday, it'll be a big game. I, I think we all learned something because I, I mentioned it, you watch Arkansas, if you watch, I watched all their games before our, we played them and they went through, I don't want to say go through the motions, but they, they weren't, in, they didn't play inspired basketball. And East Central Oklahoma had them by 14 points in the second half. And then when they got to our game, whoo, that was, you know, they jumped on us. And so now can we be ready to, to have that? We have to be ready. And then, then we sustain it through the game. And obviously we just talked about Wichita coming back and making plays um, and finding ways to win. So we're going to, you're going to have to play that whole 40 minutes against them. Any other questions for coach? Then I think, are you, I, you don't know if you've, oh, okay, he got off, okay. Anyone else? Thank you. Okay, thank Thanks. you guys. Uh, uh, coach, if you'll hold on, I'll have the TV yeah. guys log on. All right, thank you. Thanks guys.